everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap for the March 2022 Chemnitz Dialong live stream. Last month we dyed four different bases to create a colorway inspired by spring tulips. I absolutely love tulips even if it is really hard to get to them to grow in my garden because either deer or rabbits will come and eat them. <laughs> So my own personal garden is much more filled with daffodils than tulips. But I digress. I absolutely loved the gradient on the petals. And so through dip dyeing, I worked to create a pink with hints of orange and yellow gradient. First, I dip dyed each of our yarn bases in it to some yellow. And then I flipped the skeins around to dip dye the other end into a pink. I think the pink I used was deep magenta. And as I was dipping into the pink, I then eventually left the yarn a little bit out of the pot. So that way we could have some yellow that we preserved without pulling in those pinker hues to create a little bit less orange. The four yarn bases that we dyed were Knit Picks Shadow Lace, which is 100% merino wool, Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, Knit Picks Swish DK, which is 100% superwash merino, and finally a Donegal Nep Yarn from Wool to Die For, where the neps are blue, green, yellow, and pink, and so it's a very fun yarn. Most of the dyeing that I did was by feel. When I was adding on the yellow, I dipped the yarn until I was satisfied and added more color or not based on what I felt like I wanted. And so that's a really fun way to go about things because you can remove the yarn and steam set it if you are satisfied with the level of color coverage that you have on your yarn. There's no rule that says you have to absorb all of the color that is in the dye pot. It's just if you aren't going to give the yarn a lot of time to heat set, then I recommend doing a steam set after the fact. But otherwise, it worked well and it was so much fun to dye yarn during live streams and to get feedback from all of you in real time. So if you're not already subscribed, please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on notifications so that way you never miss a new video or a live stream. The Swish and Stroll colorways were very, very similar. Um, there was a little bit more pastel in the Stroll. I forget if I'd added more acid at that point or not. And I decided on the Stroll to bring in some speckles that came from some of those colors in the background. Some green from the stem and some of the purples from the background. And so we have some section of pink without speckles, some speckles here on the pink as it starts to transition, and then a little bit more green. It's very, very subtle. And it's not my normal cup of tea to do speckles and not speckle a little bit all over. So I really wanted to do something a little bit different to bring in some of those colors, but then having some of these other bright spring colors in here as well. And I do think that the speckles bring the overall yarn to something a bit more floral versus being sunset. Of course, I also love the soft simplicity of the colorway without speckles. And I think there were a few times where I wanted a little bit more pink, so I did another round of dip dyeing into the pink. And so that's another thing. You can build up the colors as you go. And dip dyeing makes these color transitions so soft versus having some harsher lines that maybe you would get with hand painting. I adore this multi-net base. And this might be the first time I've tried something that is more variegated on it versus doing some kind of layered tonal. This yarn works so well for that floral feeling. Uh, we have those little specks and pops of color in there already. So there was really no need for me to speckle on top of it. You absolutely could speckle on top of this yarn with the naps. However, a lot of times I think it's important to consider the right technique for the right yarn base. And given that part of the beauty of this base are these multicolored naps that are already worked into the yarn, in my opinion, there is no need to speckle on top of that because it would compete with the nets that are already there. But you can see that the same colors are more muted on this skein and that is because it is a blend. All of these bright colors of the nets are technically blended throughout the skein a bit as well. 
And so that decreases the brightness of the colors a bit, which I also just really, really like. Finally, we have our shadow, which is a yarn that I, when I did a lot of more lace weight projects, I knit with a lot. I really, really like this as a non-superwash lace weight yarn. And I thought it'd be really fun to do one in a variegated spring colors. Uh, it would be a little busy potentially on a complex lace pattern, but I think, I don't know, I don't know how much variegated lace weight yarn there is out there. And so I thought it would be really, really fun to dye this up this way. I really enjoy doing similar colorways on different yarn bases because I think that as comparisons go, it can really highlight the differences you might see with different fiber contents and why when I talk about depth of shade or we talk about something that is a little bit more technical using a precise amount of dye on a select amount of yarn, it is important to consider the yarn base that you're using because different bases with just subtle starting differences can really shift the tone of the same color. Not that everything here was dyed with the exact same depth of shade. Some had a little bit more color, some a little bit less, but uh, this was something that we talked a lot about during the live stream. And so I just really enjoy the opportunity to share that. But now it is time for my favorite part of these dialogues. And it's time to see all of the yarn that you dyed, inspired by the same tulip image. Every month I invite viewers to share their own interpretations with me using the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or by replying to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. And it's so fun to see how many different ways people may interpret the photo. Whether you focused on the petal, you included everything from the whole image, or maybe you were inspired by the background. It's really fun to see how a different eye might look at a picture and then interpret that into yarn because we all have different techniques that we love. We all have different yarn bases we love to dye. And well, I think that it is a wonderful, beautiful thing. I already mentioned how you can submit your photos going forward, but I always do include this information in the video description of my live streams in addition to other helpful links and things like that. And so it's always worth checking out the video description of my videos if you want to learn more, not just how to submit dialogue photos, but also if you want to learn more about my tools, equipment, and yarn, and things like that. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really enjoy doing these dialogue videos because they really push me out of my own color comfort zone. And because they really push me out of my own color comfort zone, a lot of times I find myself going for the same color palettes over and over, and it's a miracle that not everything here is done in a different hue of purple. <laughs> and I find that this not only encourages me to play with colors in maybe a different way than I may have otherwise, but it also sparked my brain for a lot of different techniques. And I really have a huge amount of fun with the process and I really hope that you do as well. If you love the yarn that I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. This yarn may no longer still be there, but my shop is filled with dozens and dozens of skeins of hand dyed yarn that I have dyed in my videos. And so it's a great way to support the content here and get some beautiful yarn in the process. I also have a Patreon of links. As I mentioned, the video description is full of good stuff, and so links to my shop and Patreon are also down in the video description. At the time I'm filming these conclusions, April is on the horizon, and I don't know what I'm gonna pick yet for the next inspiration photo. I have a whole secret Pinterest board filled with various inspiration photos. And the one thing I try to do as I pick a new photo each month is to have some variety between the current month and the previous month in terms of color temperature, or maybe saturation, but also just the colors in general. And so, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to look for yet, but I should release the new photo sometime around the 15th of the month. Thank you so much for watching.